Hello everyone. Welcome to IIT and Gate classes. This is lecture six on compiler design. And in this lecture, we are going to start algorithm for LL1 parser. If you try to remember in the previous lecture, I have discussed the parsing table for LL1 parser. Okay. And uh, grammar actually I have not written. You can watch my previous lecture. You can see the grammar. And for that grammar, we have designed this parsing table. I have discussed rules and regulations also. I'm not going to repeat them because video will be unfairly long. Please try to follow this table. And uh, in the previous lecture itself, for this grammar, we have constructed LL1 parsing table also. Now we are going to, uh, to show you what exactly is LL1 parsing algorithm. Okay, so if you try to remember in LL1 parser, we have four things, okay, so or four parts. First part was, your LL1 table. Okay. Second was stack with dollar at the end. Stack with dollar at the end. Third was your buffer. Buffer which contain string or which store the string. Which store string with dollar at the end. With dollar at end. Okay, and the last part was algorithm. Okay, and I have clearly mentioned that we have a stack with dollar at the end. Okay, we have a table like this, and then we have a buffer in which we have dollar at the end, which store the string, and we have algorithm. So algorithm will read the string from the buffer or read one symbol from the buffer. It will read Try to remember this only one symbol from the buffer. Okay, and then it will see the table about which production to choose, which production to choose. Okay, and it will push or pop some symbols from the stack, okay, depending upon what exactly is the production and so on. Okay, so let me show you the algorithm, you will get more clarity. Okay, so uh, please note it down carefully, and I will jump to the next slide now. Okay. So uh, rather before jumping to the algorithm, okay, let me uh, let me construct the parsing table for this uh, grammar also, okay, and then I will show you the algorithm, or let me show you the algorithm here only. Okay, let me show you the algorithm here only. Okay, so and then we we will uh, uh, complete this question. Okay, so yeah. So let us take the string. Okay, because for algorithm we need four things, na? or rather three things for uh, to explain algorithm we need three things that is the string stack and the table let me use the table this this one we are using okay and uh, let me take the string as id plus id star id and then dollar at the end okay this is our string okay and we have a look ahead pointer which is pointing to the first symbol of input string. Okay. And we have a stack. In stack, we have dollar at the end. And start symbol S is by default pushed onto the stack because we are starting from start symbol. Okay. And from the table itself, now we will see. Okay. Now, now see the algorithm carefully. On S, ID has been read. So we will see the table. Okay, rather sorry. It was E na. It was not a star symbol, was E. Okay, see the table, you will get the answer. Okay, in the table itself, we have given E na. Okay, so yeah, E on ID. So the production is E goes to T E dash. So we will pop this E and we will push T E dash in sequence. Please try to note it down carefully. You have to push them in sequence t and e dash so this t will be on the top of the stack so t and then e dash yeah so now i will say t on id so i will go to previous slide t on id ft dash ft dash okay so t will be popped off and ft dash will be pushed onto the stack now f on id okay see here carefully f on id i will go to the slide and see F on ID is F goes to ID. So F will be popped off and ID will be pushed onto the stack. Remember this LHS is popped off and RHS is pushed onto the stack. 
Okay, let me write it properly. LHS is popped off. LHS is pop. Okay, and RHS push in sequence. You have to remember this. We have to push in sequence. Yes. So now, now we will say ID and ID are matched. Now look ahead will move one symbol to the right. So when look ahead will move one symbol to the right, whenever there is a match. Okay. So look ahead symbol or pointer, you can say look ahead pointer. This is known as look ahead pointer. Let me use a different color. So I will say look ahead pointer. Look ahead pointer will move one symbol to the right. One symbol to the right when matching is done. When matching is done. Okay, without matching, it cannot move. Okay, now see the topmost symbol on the stack is T dash. So now T dash on plus. Go to the slide and see T dash on plus is T dash goes to null. T dash goes to null means what? Now this T dash will be popped off. And null will be pushed onto the stack. So null means nothing. So I will push nothing onto the stack. So roughly I will say that T dash has been popped off. Okay, now see the topmost symbol. Topmost symbol is E dash. So now E dash on plus. Go to the slide and see E dash on plus is plus T E dash. So try to write them in sequence. So E dash will be popped off and plus T E dash. Now I will say plus and plus are matched look ahead will move one symbol to the right. Now I will say T on ID, okay? T on ID, go to the slide and see T on ID is T goes to FT dash. So I will write them in sequence. T goes off and FT dash will be pushed out to the stack. Now I will say F on ID, okay? See the slide, F on ID, F goes to ID. So now F will be popped off and ID will be pushed onto the stack. Now ID and ID are matched. Look ahead will move one symbol to the right. Okay, and then star. Now, now T dash on star. See the slide. T dash on star. That is star F T dash. Star F T dash. So I will write here star F T dash. And T dash will be popped off. Okay. Now star and star are matched. Now F on ID. So we have already done many times. I think now by now you remember it. F goes to ID. From the table you can see. Okay, or let me show you from the table. F on ID. F goes to ID. So F will be popped off and ID will be pushed onto the stack. Now ID and ID. Okay, so yeah. Uh, sorry, look ahead will move one symbol to the right now. Okay, let me do it again if you have any confusion. Yeah, so here. We, we have star and star were cut. Okay, star and star were cancelled. So look ahead, we'll move one, one symbol to the right. Sorry for that, I forgot it. Okay, now, now we have seen F on ID. Na? This F on ID. Okay, so what we will do? Uh, F goes to ID. So now ID and ID will be matched. ID and ID will be matched. And uh, look ahead, we'll move one symbol to the right. Now, see here carefully what we are having. T dash on dollar. See the slide T dash on dollar. T dash goes to null. So we will pop pop it. T dash goes to null. Yes. Next is next. See carefully. We have E dash here. See here we have E dash. So E dash on dollar. See E dash on dollar. So E dash goes to null. So E dash will be popped off. Now see any other symbol? No, nothing is left. So I will say dollar and dollar are matched so string is accepted okay, this is the way if you have any confusion please rewind the video and watch it again okay and don't worry i will solve few more questions then you will get more clarity about it okay so this was the algorithm so algorithm summary is this lhs is popped rhs is pushed in sequence and look ahead pointer will move one symbol to the right when matching is done otherwise it won't move okay yes please try to follow it and i will jump to the next slide now Okay, so I hope you all have noted down and I will jump to the next slide now. Okay, so yeah, 
and this also. Okay, let me solve this question and then I will solve this uh, beautiful question. Uh, okay, let me solve it here. So I will show you algorithm. Okay, so for algorithm, we need three things. Now we have table which we have already done in the previous class. Try to remember it. If you are not able to follow, please watch my previous lecture. This was our table. Okay, and in the stack, say I have written this. Okay, so in the stack. Sorry, uh, in the buffer, okay, in the buffer, we have written this and uh, in the, in your stack, what we will be having dollar at the end and start symbol S. Now I will show you algorithm S on opening bracket. Okay, so let me show you the look ahead pointer also. Yeah, look at pointer is here on the first symbol. So S on opening bracket, see here as on opening bracket so this production will be applied so s will be popped off and opening as closing will be pushed onto the stack in sequence now this opening opening matched look ahead pointer will move one symbol to the right and now i will say again same thing as on opening bracket same production will be applied again opening as closing and s will be popped off okay so uh, rather we should do it like this first as should be popped off and then opening as closing okay so yeah so now opening and opening are matched look ahead will move one symbol to the right then again i will say s on opening bracket so opening as closing so s will be popped off opening as closing will be pushed onto the stack okay now i will say opening and opening are matched look ahead pointer will move one symbol to the right now s on closing bracket s on closing bracket is s goes to null s goes to null means what s will be popped off now closing and closing this is the topmost symbol of the stack now closing so uh, matching so it will be popped off now again closing and closing matched so popped off look at, look at pointer will move one symbol to the right now closing and closing okay so uh, popped off means what this closing has been removed now so this closing has been popped off from the stack okay now finally look ahead we'll move one symbol to the right because of the matching now dollar and dollar matched so string will be accepted okay so three times opening three times closing it will be accepted okay and uh, let me show you one one more example if i say closing opening and dollar if I say like this, this is my string. So now what will happen? Okay, or let me show you with a different color so that you get more clarity. Okay, yeah, so let me do it here. If I say closing, opening and dollar, this is my string. Clearly this string does not belong to, uh, this string will not be generated from this grammar. So L11 parser will give us error. How error will be shown? Now I'm going to show you this thing. So dollar is at the end, start symbol. Uh, s uh, is on the top of the stack and look ahead pointer or look ahead uh, yeah pointer is pointing to the first symbol s on closing see carefully s on closing it will be s goes to null so s will be popped off and nothing will be pushed onto the stack and finally i will say dollar and closing bracket these are not matching now and string will be rejected like this you can say okay string will be rejected or error will be shown by the parser let me show you another example okay so we have uh, see uh, we have constructed uh, or we have shown that id plus id star id uh, is uh, you can say is generated by the grammar okay the grammar i have not written you can watch my previous lecture from this table i can say that id plus id id plus id star id is generated now let me show you one example where the, the error will be shown okay so if i say id id dollar this is my string okay now let me show you how this parser will give us error message dollar will be at the end and start symbol e so e on id see the slide uh, fastly e on id e goes to te dash so e goes to te dash now t on id see see carefully t on id ft dash ft dash so t is popped off ft dash is pushed onto the stack f on id 
f will be popped off and id will be pushed onto the stack id and id are matched look ahead pointer will move one symbol to the right now t dash on id c c here carefully t dash on id t dash on id blank so blank entry means error message okay so that's when the previous class i have told you out of 30 cells 13 are filled 17 are empty and this empty cell means error so this is the way to show the error message okay so t dash on id there is nothing in the, in the table so directly directly i want to say that on t dash id cannot be read so on t dash id cannot be read means what this will be an error message okay so now i will say t dash on id a cell is empty so error is given by ll1 parser error by ll1 parser so i hope i have made the point clear please try to note it down carefully and i will jump to the next slide so i have uh, shown you both the cases first case was where the string was uh, accepted by the parser because that string was generated by the grammar and second case is uh, when the string uh, was not generated by the grammar and hence ll1 parser has shown us error message so how error is shown uh, one of the cases is that uh, blank cell has been uh, read by the parser or another case can be matching is not done properly. Okay, So in the previous uh, see here a dollar and closing bracket were matched. So obviously that, that was the error message or another case can be when when parser is bound to read the empty cell. Okay, So t dash on id cell is empty. So error will be shown. So I hope I have made the point clear. If you are still not able to follow, please rewind the video and watch it again. Okay. Now I will uh, I will solve this question completely. Okay, so LL1 parser for the given grammar. So what will be the, our step number one? Step number one will be to construct the table. Okay. For table construction, what we will say S, A, and B. These are the non-terminals. Terminal will be here A, B, and dollar. I have repeated many times that null is not a terminal symbol. So please do not write null here. Okay. Yeah. So this is our table. Now what we will show, see this production rule will go where it will go in first of this part. First of this part will be what? A. First of this part will be first of A. Now A can go to null. So obviously small a is the first. So I will write it here as S goes to A, 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 B. Now this part will go where? First of B. B is going to null. So small b. S goes to B, 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 A. Okay. Now where this A implies null will go? Fall of capital A. Fall of capital A will be what? Search capital A. Whatever is the rest part. Find that uh, find the first of that part. So here a is present. So first of this entire part will be small a. So here it will go. And again we have capital A here. So follow will be B. So it will go to here also. Okay. I'm not repeating the process of constructing table again and again. If you have any doubt, please watch my previous lecture. You will get crystal clarity. Yeah. So B implies null will go where? So Obviously, fall of B, fall of B will be B and A. So, both places it will go. B implies null, B implies null. Yes. So, finally, we have constructed our table. Now, uh, that's it. Okay. So, table construction is the main thing. So, LL1 parser for the given grammar, we have generated it. And if you want to show that how algorithm is working, so I will say, uh, let me take a string from this grammar. Okay, let us take the string as or uh, let me uh, do it. Uh, do this on the next slide. Okay, yeah. So a b is the string, a b dollar, because in the buffer we are going to store the string, and dollar will be at the end. Yes. Yeah, so here is the stack. Dollar is at the end, and star symbol is uh, on the top. So s on a. Now see carefully. S on A, 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 B. Okay, so what I will say, S will be popped off. A, 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 B will be pushed on to the stack. Now, okay, so now side by side, I will try to make the parse tree also so that you get more clarity. So first production rule, which we have used is A, 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 B. 
now now see carefully this a on small a a on small a a goes to null so a will be popped off and i will say here a goes to null now now i will say a and a are matched look ahead pointer will move one symbol to the right then a on see here a on b so it uh, see the previous slide a on b a goes to null so that means this a will go to null let me use a different color then you will get more correct a goes to null okay so a goes to null means what this a will be popped off now this b and b are matched look at pointer will move one symbol to the right dollar and dollar are matched so string is accepted now see the uh, see a uh, very beautiful concept why i am calling it as ll1 parser first l means string is scanned from left to right i have already told you in the previous class but now i am giving you the proof that why it is known as ll1 so first l means string is scanned from left to right okay so see here carefully we are scanning string from left to right only okay so first we have read this a then b and so on first we have read this a then b and then dollar and so on so string is scanned from left to right second l means lmd is applied leftmost derivation now see here carefully first this a was changed to null and then this a was changed to null so obviously uh, left most derivation is here now because here we have two non terminals and we have a choice that we can expand this also and this also but we have expanded this why we have expanded it why we have expanded it because in the stack uh, this a a a b was pushed in the sequence so in the stack a a a b was pushed so this a was on the top of the stack so it was reduced first so i can say lmd is applied this is the proof why lmd is applied okay and one means after scanning one symbol we are able to decide which production to choose which production to choose we are able to decide by scanning just one symbol yeah we are able to do this so s on a see the table itself okay s on a we have to apply this production s on b we have to apply this production rule and so on so now i think you all are able to follow this that why we are calling it as ll1 parser okay please note it down carefully and i will jump to the next slide now yes so the next is llk grammars okay so what is llk grammar see if decision about which production to choose comes after scanning k symbols from input string then grammar is called llk where k can be 1 to 3 and so on okay so decision about let me uh, underline it decision about which production to choose see ll uh, uh, ll parsers ll one parser is what it is top down parser na top down parser means decision was which production to choose so i am saying if decision about which production to choose comes after scanning k symbol from input string then the grammar is called llk where k is 1 2 3 and so on it can be 4 5 6 and so on it can be anything so if k is 1 we will say that grammar is ll1 so when can i say grammar is ll1 when we are able to design ll1 parser for it ll1 parser for it one and the same thing if for grammar we are able to design ll1 parser then grammar will be ll1 okay so now if k is 2 then we will say it is ll2 grammar so ll2 grammar means what can we design ll2 parser for it ll2 parser no actually yeah we can design ll2 parser but it is not feasible okay why because number of cells will be very high how it will be high please have some patience i will show you in subsequent slides ll3 grammar when k is 3 then ll3 grammar that means ll3 parser same is the problem with ll3 when ll2 is it is not feasible so obviously for ll3 also it is not feasible number of cells will be very very high in the table okay in the table number of cells will be very very high so the main thing is k uh, when k is 1 that is ll1 grammar when k is 2 then ll2 k is 3 ll3 adds on what is this k k means which uh, uh, decision about which production to choose comes after scanning k symbol from input string okay after scanning k symbols we are able to decide which production to choose 
Okay, let me show you some example, then you will get more clarity on it. Yeah, so for example, if I say this, this grammar is, what is this grammar? See, we, uh, if you try to remember, the, uh, we have just uh, solved this question. Yeah, we have solved here. So this is nothing but LL1. Why LL1? Because we are able to design LL1 parser for it. So this is LL1 grammar. Directly you can write. Similarly, this is also LL1 grammar. We have just shown you the same grammar. See the slide. Yeah, I have shown you just uh, here only. Okay, so this is also LL1. Question number three. Is this grammar LL1? Okay. So let me show you with a very simple example. See. Uh, LL1 means what decision about which production to choose comes after scanning one symbol. Now, if I say string is AD, now on S, if A is red, on S, if A is red, now can you decide which production to choose? No, because we have to read D also. After reading D, we will decide, okay, S goes to AD should be applied because all these productions are having A as common. Here we are having common prefixes problem if you try to remember. And this grammar is clearly non-deterministic. It can never be LL1. Why it cannot be LL1? Because on S, when A is read, then we cannot decide which production to choose. So how many symbols you have to read properly so that you can decide which production to choose? Obviously, two symbols we have to read. Okay, so hence this grammar will be LL2. Are you able to follow it? If not, then please rewind the video and watch it again. I'm not going to repeat it again and again. Okay. Yeah. Please try to follow it. Please try to rewind the video and watch it again if you have any doubt. Pause the video and note it down. I will jump to the next slide now. Okay. Yeah. So next question is this. So now I think you all will be able to guess this grammar will be LL3. Why this grammar is LL3? Because if my string is say AAD, S on A, are you able to decide which production to choose? No. Now if you read two symbols, are you able to decide? No, because both are have, all the production rules are having double, double A as common. After three, after reading three symbols, you will be able to decide. So this will be LL3 grammar. Now, can you show me a grammar LL4? Yeah, very easily. Say, uh, see, three symbols should be common. Uh, a, B, A, D. Then A, B, A, C. A, B, A, B. So here, three symbols are common. So after three symbols, still you won't be able to decide. See, after one symbol, there is no question of deciding which production to choose. Because one symbol is same. After two symbols, again, no question of deciding. Because A, B, A, B, and A, B. After three symbols also, we are not able to decide. So after four symbols, we will be able to decide. So this is LL4 grammar. I hope I have made the point clear to all of you. Please uh, pause the video and try to note it down. And I will jump to the next slide now. Okay. Yes. So now a very beautiful question will come in our mind. Is every grammar LL1? Answer is obviously no. Every grammar is not LL1. See the previous slide also. Is this grammar LL1? No. This grammar was LL2. It cannot be LL1. Similarly, this also. This was LL3. It cannot be LL1. This is LL4. It cannot be LL1. So there are lots and lots of grammar which are not LL1. So answer is no. Now, See, these examples are very easy. You can directly say that these are not LL1. But how to check whether the grammar is LL1 or not formally or more precisely? So I will say whenever, whenever LL1 parsing table is having two or more entries in any cell, then that grammar is not LL1. That grammar is not LL1. Okay. 
So whenever LL1 parsing table is having two or more entries in any cell, in any of the cell, if LL1 parsing table is having two or more entries, then that grammar is not LL1. Okay, so why, why that grammar will be not LL1? Because parser will get confused. Why? Why this is so? Because parser will get confused about which production to choose. About which production to choose. That is the main problem. For example, see, see, see this, this question. Okay, A, B, A, C, A, D. Or let me write it here again. This was the question na, which we have shown that it is LL2. Let me write it again here. You will get more clarity. S goes to A, B, A, C, and A, D. Now for this grammar, if you try to construct LL1 parsing table, how many rows it will be having? Only one row because there is only one non-terminal that is S. Okay, now how many terminal symbols? A, B, C, D, and dollar. A, B, C, D, dollar. Now S on A, C. This production will be where? In the S row and first of this part will be A only. So in the A column. So I will write it here. Similarly, this production will be where? In the S row in uh, a column because first of this is AC. Similarly, this also. So now in one cell of the table, we are having three entries. As soon as if I say string is AD and dollar is at the end in the buffer, and we are, are trying to apply algorithm, okay, and dollar is at the end, S is on the top of the stack. So I will say S on a now s on a now there are three entries now which production to choose we do not know okay because we have three entries now please do not say that sir because we have ad so we we will apply this production no 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 you just have to decide on s on a you just have to uh, there should be only one production rule and that production will be applied by l1 parser here we have three production rules so which production to choose parser is getting confused so uh, this is not l1 we are, we are humans now that's why and we have eyes that's why we are saying that this is ad and here we have ad so apply this and so on but how parser will decide parser cannot decide okay so this is an error message yeah please try to note it down and i will jump to the next slide now okay pause the video and note it down hmm so I'm jumping to next slide. Now the question is, S implies S A or B. Is this grammar LL1? Again, I will make, try to make the table. So there will be only one row that is S and two terminal symbol A, B and we will have dollar. So this production will go where? First of S. First of S is B only. S goes to S. This production will go where? First of S. It will be B only. So both productions are going in uh, one cell since this grammar is not LL1. Now, if you see carefully, here we are having left recursion. And whenever we have left recursion, that grammar will never be LL1. Please try to follow it. Okay. Why it will never be LL1? Let me show you by some example. Okay, uh, Let us take the string as B triple A and dollar will at the end. Now, and here uh, we are writing uh, stack. Dollar is at the end, start symbol is at the top. Okay, now I will say this S on B. Which production to choose? We are getting confused. Let me take it as A. So I will remove this S and I will put here as A. Now, same problem. S on B. Again, I will remove this S and I will put S A. Same problem, S on B, I will remove this S and put S A, dot, 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 we keep on going, okay, and look ahead pointer will point to only first symbol, it is not going ahead, 
because of left recursion. So parser will go in infinite loop. Okay, so please try to follow it. This uh, type of grammar will never be LL1. So whenever there is left recursion, grammar is not LL1. Please try to follow it. Yes, pause the video, note it down, and I will jump to the next slide now. Next, S goes to A, A, A goes to A, A. Yeah, is this grammar LL1? Let me show you again S. Then here we have only one terminal symbol A and dollar. So this production will go where? First of this part, that is A only. Where this production will go first of this part that is capital A first is A only. We will stop here only. Okay, and we have another non terminal A also. So A goes to A. Yeah, so we will, uh, okay, and we, we do not extend these things and so on. We will just stop here because we have uh, one cell is having two or more entries, rather, one cell is having two entries, so it will never be LL1. Obviously, parcel will get confused. Now, if I uh, if I show you uh, if if we say more carefully, then we can say that this grammar is ambiguous, and ambiguous grammars are never LL one, because obviously uh, by common sense we can say ambiguous grammar means two or more parts free for any string. So which parse is correct, which parse is wrong, we do not know. We have already told you in the previous classes that ambiguous grammars cannot be passed by any parser. Uh, except one parser that is operator precedence parser, which can parse few but not all ambiguous grammars. I have already told you many times. Okay. So this is ambiguous, so I will say it is never LL1. So another very good uh, information to you is ambiguous means it is never LL1. Okay, yeah, and one more point I want to clarify here. Please do not consider this as non-determinism. S goes to A, A goes to A. These are two different symbols. Okay, please do not say that this is non-determinism and this will create problem. No, 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 no. They won't create problem because this production will uh, rule will go where in S row, and this production rule will go where in A row. So both will be in different rules. Okay, uh, see here. This is in S row. This is in A row. Okay, these are not creating problem. This and this are creating problem. Okay. Yes. Pause the video and note it down. I will, I will jump to the next slide. Why I have told you this thing? Because uh, uh, when we will try to solve few questions, then you will get confusion. So in advance, I have told you. Okay. Please try to follow it. Okay. So I'm jumping to next slide now. S goes to A, B, A, C, A, D. Is this LL1? No. Obviously, it is not LL1. I have told you many times. And see here carefully. Uh, here we have non-determinism. So non-determinism is never LL1. Okay. Let me show you A, B, C, D. Because this is a recorded session. Huh? Some of you might get confused. So I have to write here A, B, A, C, A, D. Now, which production to choose? We are getting confused. For example, if my string is AB and look ahead pointer is pointing here and dollar is at the end. So in the stack, we have dollar and S. So S on A. Which production to choose? We do not know because we have three choices. Hence, it is not LL1. So final conclusion is non-determinism, then it is never LL1. Okay. Please pause the video, note it down. I will jump to the next slide. Yeah, so final conclusion is what? If grammar is LL1, sorry, if left recursion is present, then it is never LL1. If grammar is ambiguous, it is never LL1. If grammar is non-deterministic, it is never LL1. We have one more beautiful shortcut. See, uh, sometimes nothing can be there and still grammar is not LL1. Why it is not LL1? Let me show you. Okay, if I say we have production like S goes to alpha A, okay, and beta, okay, let me write alpha beta only, okay, alpha beta. Now S goes to alpha beta. 
now i will say this production will go where in the s row where in which column in the first of alpha this production row will go where in the s row where in the first of beta so now obviously if something is common between them first of alpha and first of beta something is common then both the production rule will be present in that cell and that will create problem for us hence this must be 5 so nothing should be common between them if something is common then it will never be ll1 okay so this is the basic rule which you have to remember okay so don't worry i will show you some example then you will get more clarity so the basic idea is s goes to alpha and beta there are two production rule alpha will go where in the s row where first of alpha this will go where uh, in the s row in the first of beta so obviously first of alpha and first of beta should be uh, intersection should be phi if something is common let us suppose something is common and that is a a is common so i will go i will say in the s row in the a column i have to write s goes to alpha also s goes to beta also which will create problem for us and that grammar will be never ln1 so i hope i have made the point clear to all of you please try to follow it okay this is the first part of the test second part is if i say s goes to alpha and null like this there are two production rule now s goes to alpha will go where in the first of alpha this will go where in the follow of s okay so intersection of both must be empty because if something is common then again that will create problem see if i say b symbol is common between them so i will say this production rule will go where in the first of alpha and first of alpha is having b and some other symbols don't worry about them we have some other symbols so s in the s row in the b column i will write s goes to alpha why because first of alpha contain b now follow of s also contain b so s goes to null will also go in go here only okay so again two production rule so which to choose we do not know hence this is not ll1 okay so i hope i have made the point clear to all of you so a and null so first of alpha intersection fall of s that must be empty if something is common then uh, for example if b is common then in the s row where this production will go in the s row in the first of alpha and that contain b so obviously s goes to alpha will become here and uh, where this will go in the fall of s fall of s contain b i am supposing it so s goes to null will go in a, in the s row and b column so obviously that will create problem yeah so i hope i have made the point clear please note it down carefully and i will jump to the next slide now okay so now i will uh, sh uh, share with you the shortcut okay that means uh, to check the grammar is ll1 or not so uh, if uh, left recursion is present it is never ll1 ambiguous then it is never ll1 non deterministic it is never ll1 and fourth is another very beautiful shortcut which I have shown you in the previous slide only. You can see the previous slide. So in the final conclusion, I have shown you the shortcut. Okay. Yes, please try to follow it. Yeah, so I now I'm going to show you a few questions. So question number one is as goes to AS, BS, BS, AS, and null. Is this grammar LL1? So if you have done TOC from my uh, from my videos on the YouTube then you might have guessed that this is ambiguous grammar okay or if you are not able to guess it then no problem also uh, we will give uh, we will solve by shortcut also th this shortcut okay this is very helpful okay. Th this will help you a lot okay so uh, if you are able to follow then it's very good that the grammar is ambiguous okay i'm not going to uh, explain why this grammar is ambiguous and so on because uh, this will waste our time unnecessary okay you can watch my toc lectures you will get the idea this grammar is ambiguous so directly i will say that it is not ll1 because ambiguous grammars are never ll1 
Now, if you are not able to guess in exam whether this grammar is ambiguous or not, you are getting confused. So, the best way to check is this only. This is the best way to check. Okay, let me show you here. So, this production rule will go where? In the first of this part, that is A, no problem. This production rule will go where? In the first of this part, that is B, no problem. Here we are having A and here we are having B and this is equal to 5, so no problem. Test number 1 passed. Test number 2, S goes to null, will go where? Follow of S. Follow of S will contain what? Follow of S will contain A also and B also. See carefully, follow of S is B, follow of S is A. So A and B both are present. Now I will be having problem. Okay, so consider this as alpha 1, alpha, this is say beta. So first of alpha, second test fails. Huh? First of alpha intersection follow of S is not equal to 5. Why? First of alpha is A, all of S is what? A comma B. Intersection is A. And second test fail. So this grammar is not LL1. Are you able to follow it? If not, please rewind the video and watch it again. You will get the answer. So the basic thing is, uh, see, S goes to null will go where? In the fall of S. So in the S row, in the fall of S. So that is A comma B. This production rule will go where? In the uh, S row, where? In the A column, because first of this part is A. Obviously, that will create problem. If still you are having any doubt, if you are not able to visualize, then let me show you by simple example. Okay, let me construct the table S, A, B, and dollar. Now, this production rule will go where? A. S goes to A, S, B, S. This production rule will go where? S goes to B, S, A, S. Now, S goes to null will go where? Follow of this. So, S goes to null here also. S goes to null here also. Now, two cells are having two entries. Obviously, that will create problem for us. S on A, whether you use this production or this production, we, uh, a parcel will get confused. So, hence, this is not LL1. So, that's what exactly I was saying that this production will go in S row, in S row and A column. Now, S goes to null is also going in A column, in the S row and A column. That obviously creating problem. Yes, please note it down carefully and I will jump to the next slide. Okay. This is the second question. We have to show whether this grammar is LL1 or not. See, this is there is only one production. So one production will never create problem for us. Okay. S is going to only on, uh, say there is only one way to uh, to expand S, na, that is this only. So it will never create problem. Never problematic. Never create problem. Now S goes to A and uh, C and uh, this may create problem. So this production will go where? In the first of this part, that is C only. A goes to null will go where? Follow of A. Follow of A will be what? First of B. First of B is what? D. Okay, so let me write it here. Follow of A is D and uh, B can go to null, so we can have B also. Follow of A is this and uh, this production will go where? C. So DB and C. Intersection, nothing is common, so test is passed. So where this production will go? In the, uh, in the D column. This production will go in the uh, in the B row, D column. This production will go where? Fall of B. Yes, what is the fall of B? Only B. Okay, nothing is there. Uh, so, see, see, fall of B will be, uh, B is in this here, na? so first of this part, that is B only. Fall of B is B. And uh, this was D. So, nothing is common. So, no problem. This grammar is LL1. 100% this grammar is LL1. Okay. So, fall of A was D and B. And uh, this was what? Let me write properly. Fall of D is A is D and B. And uh, this was C now. 
this production is going where see so nothing is common so this is the case okay so test one was not needed here test one see see this was the test one na this a part is the test one let me write properly and this is the test two test one was not needed because alpha beta type nothing was there na okay this was needed because alpha and null these were present here so i hope i have made the point clear to all of you so i have directly applied the test two and we have got the answer yeah please pause the video and note it down and i will jump to the next question question number 3 s goes to a a a goes to a i have already shown you this is not ll1 because it is ambiguous and let me apply the test here so that you get the more clarity because test will be uh, passed by every ll1 na huh? yeah so i will say first of this will be what a first of this will be what a so obviously a intersection a will be what a so we are not getting uh you can say empty we are getting a as the answer so test number 1 failed hence it is not ll1 okay yeah please try to follow it if you are still not able to follow please rewind the video and watch it again and jump to next slide now okay question number 4 as goes to ab or null p goes to bc or null capital c goes to small c s or null so here we have to apply only test 2 no need of test 1 because alpha beta type nothing na so uh, something alpha and null alpha and null alpha and null so only test 2 will be uh, we have to apply test 1 we need not apply okay so how how we will apply see i will say here first of this part is what a and fall of s will be what fall of s will be what uh, fall of s uh, see s goes to null will go where in the fall of s so try to see fall of s fall of s is fall of c fall of c is fall of b fall of b is fall of s so fall of s will be what obviously uh, 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 it will be dollar na so fall of s will be dollar okay let me write uh, repeat it again see fall of s blindly we have to write dollar we need not do anything we have to write blindly dollar and then we will try to see where s is present in the rhs so s is present here in rhs so we say fall of s is fall of c now i will try to find fall of c fall of c is fall of b now i try to find fall of b fall of b is fall of s okay so it is just like a loop so nothing will be added here so it will be dollar only so here a and here dollar nothing is common so here no problem here again fall of b is dollar only So here this will be B. First of this part is what B. So no problem. So here it will be C, and here it will be dollar. No problem. So this is what LL one. I have done on a faster manner. Please try to follow it. Fall of B will be only dollar. Okay, try to follow it. Fall of C will be only dollar. Please try to follow these things. Fall of S is dollar. Fall of B. Fall of C, all will be dollar. Please try to follow it. I have told you many times how to find follow and so on. You can watch the previous lectures if you have any doubt. So final conclusion is this grammar is LL one. Let me show you another example. S goes to A B. A goes to A null. B goes to B null. Now tell me, is this LL one? this production i have repeated many times no problem at all it will never get problem here we have to apply test 2 only test 1 no needed because here alpha null alpha null type so this is fall first of this will be a now if follow of a contains small a then we will be having problem follow of a will be what first of b first of b is what small b okay, so follow of a i am writing Fall of A will be what? First of B. First of B is what? Small B. Since it can go to null, the fall of A is fall of S. Fall of S is dollar. So nothing is common. Test is passed here. First, 
this person will go where b and uh, b goes to null will go where in the fall of b the fall of b will be what fall of b will be yeah fall of b is fall of s that is dollar only b and dollar nothing is common okay so no problem at all so this will be ll1 Okay, I am jumping to next slide now. S goes to ASA null. A goes to C null. Now again here, test one not needed. Test two is needed because alpha null, alpha null type. Where it will go? A. Where it will go? Fall of S. Fall of S will be what? Follow of S will be first of A, first of A will be C, and since uh, this can go to null, A can go to null. The follow of S is follow of S. That is nothing but dollar. A follow of S dollar. Uh, we know blindly we have to write. So C and dollar intersection. Nothing is common. Test is passed. Where it will go? C. Where this will go? Follow of A. Follow of A is follow of S. C dollar. Yeah. Now we get problem. So intersection will be not phi. It will be C. So hence this grammar is not LL1. So I will say A goes to C where it will go first of C that is C. So in A row and C column, in A row and C column, this production will go. And A goes to null will go where C and dollar. So A row C column, A goes to null of. So two entries in one cell, it will create problem. Yes. Please note it down and I will jump to the next slide now. Yes. So let me show you just one more question. Okay. Yeah. So S goes to A, A goes to B, B, C, D, A goes to A, B or null, C goes to C, C or null. So what we have to do here, I have repeated many times, this production will not create any problem. This will uh, may create problem. So you have to check first of B and first of C. First of B is what? A, uh, so first of this part, nah? first of this part will be what? A, because first of B will be A. Now since B can go to null, so we can have B also. Now, first of this part will be what? Capital C. First of capital C will be small c. And since C can go to null, so we can have D also. Nothing is common. So, test one. We have applied here test one, huh? alpha one, beta one, and so on. So, we have alpha, beta, you can say anything. This is alpha, this is beta. So, we have to apply test one and the test one pass. Here, we have to apply test two. Here, also, we have to apply test two. So, now see the test two. A, B. So first of this will be A only. Fall of B. B implies null will go where? Fall of B. So fall of B will be what? Fall of B will be small b. Fall of B will be fall of B only. So not, no, nothing more than that. So test is passed. Nothing is common. This production will go where? C. And uh, this production will go where? Fall of C. Fall of C is what? Small d. Nothing is common, test is passed. So this is LL1. Okay, so I hope I have done lots and lots of questions. By now you have got the clarity. So this is all about LL1 parser. Here our LL1 parser is completed. In the next class, we will study the next topic. Okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye.